Hey, everybody. It's Ian Hart here with Healing Hacks, and I got my buddy here, Steve Young. And um, yeah, so welcome, Steve. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Super excited for this amazing chat we're going to have. Yeah, and um, so Steve and I met, I think, it, I think it's roughly about eight, nine years ago. We met in a mastermind group, um, kind of people that were on the cutting edge of health and fitness. And uh, so you've been in the healing and health industry for about 23 years. And um, what I'm, I'm just hearing, which I guess, have you even promoted this? The fact that you're, you're bringing in AI to finding the root cause of the healing for, is this for everybody in general, for the, the population? Yeah, yeah. So that's a big project. We're working on a lot of stuff, but that's like the, the final destination, which is, yeah, we just started um, curating the team, the company to build the AI, the process of how we're going to, like what data are we going to feed the AI uh, that essentially will help people um, figure out what are the imbalances in their bodies mm -hmm. that if left imbalance manifest into symptoms that the traditional medicine will label. We're going to help people identify what those imbalances are and then show them how to reverse them without the need for medications and all that stuff. Yeah, that's... Man, that is awesome. And that's a good segue because one of the things I did want to talk to you about, and that's like always on the top of my list, is our current medical system and how it's working and how it's functioning now. And um, basically that it's broken and there is no fixing it. So at some point, this is what I spoke to um, numerous people about, that it's going to collapse here in the next... 10 to 20 years, it, it will collapse. We don't know when, right? I mean, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. So we have some pretty definitive data on this now. And so um, I was talking about like the, the medical system is broken in so many ways, right? Like financially, it's 18% of our GDP. And at the rate that it's growing, so what that means is every dollar America spends, 18 cents goes to healthcare, right? So we spend twice as much as any other country and we're literally ranked last right now. We were ranked 27th last year, right? we're, we're last this year. And so um, what we also know is at the rate that we're spending, um, it will bankrupt America in 14 years. Mm. So we know it won't take 20 years to revamp because by 14 years it will bankrupt America. And of course, the companies and the system that is um, plundering the masses of money, they know they can't keep plundering because in 14 years there'll be nothing left to plunder. And so I predict we'll start to see um, changes happening in about 10 years. If you look at data points from Ray Kurzweil, what he believes is going to happen with nanorobots in our bodies by 2029, a lot of these dots do start to connect. That the system will have to be revamped really in, in the next 10 years, right? And so the, the interesting thing is when it revamps, what we're trying to do is we're trying to revamp it to give the power to the people, not to revamp it to give just more power to the big company. That's that's yeah, right. See. That's why I love, I love connecting with people like you and I love following people like you because I'm all about empowerment mm -hmm. and giving the power to the people. Yeah. And, um, the medical community, you know, it had an altruistic beginning, obviously, mm -hmm. but it's gotten out of control, I believe, and mm -hmm. it's all about taking the power away. Yeah. And, um, where are you with your thoughts on like all this censoring of, you know, uh, what they call anti-vaccine now and um, like what's your thoughts on that like the censoring of information yeah yeah so um, I mean first I'll, I'll say that the the entire system is the issue the people in the system are just great people like no doctor you know like I know I went to med school so no doctor goes to uh, medical school and says I'm going to go and poison people right, right? So they, they do in genuinely want to help people but they're, you know, unfortunately humans are very easy to brainwash, right? So over and over again, we're actually getting better at better at brainwashing people because the science on brainwashing is getting better. Mm -hmm. So the, those that are really in control, control the flow of information, they're the ones that's influencing the masses. And that includes, you know, the doctors. Like doctors don't know when they prescribe certain drugs that they believe are helping is actually harming people. They don't know that. Right, because a drug rep isn't buying them lunch and saying, hey, this actually is going to be more harmful than helpful. Right? And so, of course, they believe they're doing the best thing. So I know, I know, you know, I don't want people watching, hearing us, thinking that we're saying doctors are 
you know, not helpful. It's the system, right? Doctors are humans just like us with feelings and they're amazing people. It's just a system. And so that in a way transitions to the answer of, you know, censoring of information. Mm-hmm. For sure, for the longest time since the dawn of history, you know, the, the really smart and powerful people know they can control information, they can control the masses, right? And so, which is why if you look at most media that we have, the big ones, it's owned by a handful of companies, right? Like a handful of companies actually control exactly what people think. And so for sure, there is all yeah. kinds of censoring of all kinds of information, forget just vaccines, all, all kinds of information happening. We're being told how to think, what to think, and constantly being influenced all the time. You just kind of know, it's almost like you, you just have to acknowledge like we live in a matrix, right? And we're, we're under this, this spell and um, always kind of start to always question everything even if it's a given, like question it for sure. Right, I saw this meme and it said, the news used to tell us what happened and we decided what to think about it. Now they tell us what to think about it and we have to decide whether it happened or not. Yes. And I was like, that's exactly how journalism has like transformed. So this is a good segue into, you know, medication. So the doctors think that they're doing a person good, but in fact, uh, you know, you're talking about the AI analyzing any imbalances. When the truth is the medication is either blocking something, right, mm-hmm. or putting them further into imbalance, correct? Yep. Yeah, so what's really interesting as we proceeded with this project a while ago, which is um, obviously we can't claim things, and no one could because the FDA would come and slap us, which is, we're, you've been labeled with X diagnosis, let's just, we'll say diabetes. Right. You know, obviously we can't say like, it cures diabetes, right? right? And so, but what's awesome about this is, it's the same thing I tell patients all the time, which is keep in mind that the, the system will label you with this because then they can match a drug to it. Right? Of course, there's other reasons. Like it, it puts a, a, a structure around the understanding of the thing in a way. However, if we just, bypass the label, right? If we just will take diabetes as an example, like what is diabetes? Well, um, it's where your body becomes less able to process the insulin, which is trying to shuttle blood sugar into your cells. Then you go, okay, what causes that blockage? Well, those cells are less sensitive because of some inflammation. What causes the inflammation? Well, either your gut's off, you're sleeping poorly, your circadian rhythm is off from that, you're stressed, uh, it could be from toxins, right? Environmental toxins in your body. It could be from foods that you're eating, foods that are healthy, but you need to your genetics and your bacteria in your blood. It is actually unhealthy for you. And so we don't really need to call it diabetes. We just find every one of those imbalances I just listed and resolve them. And guess what? The, the magical label goes away, right? So we bypass the entire, we don't have to play the game. We yeah. can make own rules. We bypass the label and just see it from uh, an imbalanced perspective. And so, yeah, most drugs treats the label, not the imbalances, right? Like for example, if you, for, uh, let's say diabetes, you're given a blood sugar pill or an injection of insulin, you're not given, a, I mean, in fact, if you were given a pill that magically helped decrease stress, helped you sleep better and decrease inflammation, that actually would be better than a drug that treats the blood sugar, right? Because now we're actually getting to the, the root things. Right. So, yeah, so I, you know, I'm a huge fan of um, obviously not taking medications. I mean, there are times where medication is helpful. It's a bridge. It, it, it buys us time to help you feel better while we resolve the root issues. Then for that short period, it has its use, but no medication is really helpful. I mean, I shouldn't say no. 95% of medications is not helpful for long-term use, right? There's, we can find pockets of examples where they may be, but 95% of medications is not helpful for long-term use. Can you give an example of when medication um, would be used yeah. if someone's in a specific situation? Sure. Yeah. I, I cut your arm off, right, right now, and you're like screaming in pain. Nothing wrong with taking a painkiller right now so you feel better. Yeah. until you find your arm and sew it back on. Right. Right. And so for trauma, usually it's the trauma type stuff. Uh, like you have a brain hemorrhage and we do know there are specific drugs. I mean, even just breathing hydrogen gas technically, which is a drug, 
um, can protect your brain while we buy time to kind of do some other stuff. So it's it's a very transient use in a very case specific scenario. Right. Most drugs long term just you know doesn't work. Most drugs actually just enables the sickness to grow and perpetuate. Right. Like if you're stressed and you're not eating healthy, you're not sleeping well, and therefore you have high blood pressure, we give you a drug to decrease blood pressure so it's quote unquote managed, but we didn't do anything to not have you be stressed and help you sleep better. And 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 so those things are actually still rotting the insides of your body. And next you have like, oh, I have some dementia. Oh, I have some blood sugar issues. Right. So if I was to like if, if the blood pressure drug increased blood pressure, if we just made the opposite drug, right, it actually increases symptoms, then the person would stop and go, Oh my God, they took a pill, they got worse. Yeah. Like, Let me figure this out. They actually then would be forced to address the root cause. Right. If we like make opposite drugs, like bizarro drugs, actually would be helpful more so than the drugs. Yeah, it's it's really when you analyze it, the insanity is just so crazy that mm-hmm. When we, you, yeah, you're in the matrix. You look at society and you're like, okay, hold on a second. What, what happened here? You're taking a drug and it's basically like moving you further from the truth. Yeah. Right? Or putting on a mask. Yeah. And, um, so um, can you tell us that obviously the name of the book is Healing Hacks. And so it's uh, healing a hack is in, uh, I guess in about 1955, the first time the word was used was mm-hmm. MIT and it was used as an unusual way to bypass, bypass like an unusual problem or, or a problem. Okay. And so um, I guess nowadays we have like biohacking, we have like um, any way to get faster solutions. So um, would you say there's any general hacks besides some of the things you just mentioned, which was like, you know, sleeping better, mm-hmm. right? Um, I mean, something that I'm going to get into you with is like hyperbaric oxygen chamber, getting more oxygen, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what would you kind of say is a base foundation for some people that are just feeling, want to feel better? Yeah. So um, well, I'll use an analogy of uh, like a boat, right? So imagine you, your life is a boat and you're in this boat and the boat's sinking, like there's water coming in, right? And your goal is to stay afloat because if the boat sinks, you're dead. Yeah. So, um, and there's a lot of things that's wanting the water to come in. And in my mind, there's like five main holes that most people will have in a boat. Mm-hmm. If you look at the research, we have tons of research for 29 years. You'll find that there's some patterns right with this. And so the five main holes that are causing the water to come in that brew illness is um, sleep, stress, toxins, gut health and food, food choices, right? Those are the big five. There's some other small ones, but those are the main five. And so um, whenever you're trying to heal yourself, whether it be through um, hacks or any other approach, make sure that you are at least addressing the fundamental five mm-hmm. first before you, you upgrade, right? Because a lot of times I'm a huge fan of like, always question, is this getting at the root cause or is it getting at the symptoms? And I've kind of wrote this on Facebook before. Um, some people would take like curcumin for their inflammation instead of Advil, which is great, but I'm like, but you're still treating the symptoms. What's causing the inflammation? Right? So if you just substitute a natural thing for a drug, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's much better. It is healthier, it's a healthier choice, but the approach is you're still suppressing symptoms only. Right. You're not you're never plugging those holes. You're just dumping out the water more effectively. Right, right. And so that's that's the way I look at everything is that are we plugging holes? And if there are, most of them are plugged, then you can upgrade your ship. Then you can put like a motor on there and maybe you can put some sails, like you can make the ship go faster. Right. So a lot of the 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 proponents of hacking out there, they're definitely really con- really focused on making the ship pretty and going faster, but yet the holes are still there. Right. So as you're approaching your health, you want to discern, have I plugged those holes as best as possible before I make my ship and my boat, you know, fancier and all that stuff. Yeah. That's great advice. So essentially we're talking about the foundation of like life principles, essentially. Right. And once you've got those in place, then you can start to stack everything on top. Exactly. Right. And so hyperbaric chamber to answer that question. It's amazing. Um, 
obviously getting good oxygen under higher pressure, saturating yourselves with oxygen and other gases like hydrogen and all that stuff. It's incredible. However, uh, it is still mostly treating the symptoms of something, right? It's an enhancement, yeah. right? Because if you are, um, I don't know, stress, the way you're perceiving world, the world is bringing about a heightened stress state. And that's one of the biggest holes and it is for a lot of people. Then spending, the way I look at it is spending an hour, let's say on meditation, or maybe with a really good, um, we'll call it psych expert, um, would be better than a hyperbaric chamber, right? Because that's plugging one of the, the five main holes. Right. But if you're meditating and you have like clarity in life and, and those holes are plugged for sure, and you're like, and you're working out hard and you want to like slow down aging and recover faster at that point, you want to make your, your ship awesome, then for sure, uh, hyperbaric. Gotcha. Now, how familiar are you with you uh, with the, the whole stem cell thing now? Huge. Yeah. So we've had tons of patients that, um, for example, we had a patient that was told by three surgeons, you have to get a knee replacement because you're bone on bone. And she, she was like, you know, eight out of 10 pain, could barely walk. Yeah. So I, I mean, in my mind, I believe we can already um, skip most um, joint replacement surgeries. And so we... Right. We followed the protocol and we didn't even do like the full protocol. This is like the, the watered down protocol, yeah. which is um, we pulsed her knee with some PMF pulse electromagnetic field. Yeah. And uh, she had stem cell injections and then we pulsed again for six more weeks. And then she was running on the beach eight weeks later. Wow. And this is, so this is a year, year and a half ago. Um, you know, her daughter came in recently. She's like, yep, mom's still doing fine. So it like, hasn't like regressed or anything. And so literally bypassed knee replacement surgery, no problem. So is this her own, is this her own stem cells? Yeah. So you, there's many sources of stem cells. She right. opted for, um, I believe the one that she got in North Jersey, I mean, New Jersey, um, uh, was from, um, ex, like an external source. So there's, you can get external source, you can get it from your fat or you can get it from your bone marrow and they all have their, their differences, but yeah, stem cells, it's, it's the future now. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've heard a lot about it. I've thought about doing it for some, like, some of the challenges that I had with, like, autoimmunity and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I know they have, like, embryonic stem cells. So yeah. can, you ex can you just explain the difference between the, the bone marrow from the fat or embryonic? Is there, like, certain modality that it would be better for? Yes. Um, but now we're going to get a little too nitty gritty. Yeah. So for, <laughs> depending on what you're trying to regenerate, yeah. the source of the material does matter. Um, we're also starting to understand like, so that protocol was that she did for the knee was a year and a half ago. Already there's like, if that was today, I actually would have an even much better protocol. Right. So we know, for example, if you're trying to inject stem cells into the joint, but the joints inflamed, the type of cartilage, it doesn't matter what type of stem cells you're injecting in there from where, the, the stem cells will turn into the wrong type of cartilage. Mm. So you're going to want to do whatever you can, like massive amounts of curcumin, any kind of physiological thing that you can do to shut the inflammation down, pulse it, put light into it, all that stuff. And yeah. then you actually would want to get into a hyperbaric chamber for a couple of sessions before you extract the stem cells out because the studies show that makes the stem cells much better and then you inject it back in. So literally science is progressing so fast. We can now, in following that protocol, the stem cell injection will work hundreds of percent better. Not, not 10, 20% better, but hundreds wow. of percent better. Yeah. Wow, just in a year and a half. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty yeah. crazy. I mean, the science. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So um, yeah, um, I've heard you talk about using PEM in combination with hyperbaric oxygen chamber. So those who don't know, pulsed electromagnetic Frequency actually got one right there. This is a biocharger. Yep. Um, that's one of the things that I've, I've used. Um, but if you can tell a little bit about the science of why using them in combination, like increases uptake of nutrients or just enhances life in general. Or, or sure. Yeah, so I mean the PMF alone has amazing healing properties. But one of the things that it does is it increases the fancy scientific word is tissue permeability by 40%. And basically what that means is if your cells were water balloons, right? So inside the water is all your DNA and all the different stuff. Um, 
it basically allows stuff to flow through the rubber of the water balloon 40% better. Right? So for example, if you're, if you're trying to detox, it will allow toxins to exit your cells 40% better. But if you're trying to get more nutrients into the cell, it will enter 40% better. Right? So that's a, a super simple way to look at it is the PMF really enhances any other modality where you're trying to get that energy or that substance into your cells because it increases that ability by 40%. But then aside from that, you know, if you want to get a little bit more technical, so for example, for um, tendons and ligaments, I mean, they know that the PMF essentially all the way down to the genetic level, it knows what gene it affects. And genes are like machines. When you, when you turn on that machine, it makes a protein basically. And so they know exactly what machines the, the PMF turns on relative to tendons and ligaments. And then so if that machine, think of it as um, um, it, it needs input it needs um, energy right to, to make the proteins well if you can give it more energy and then you can turn that machine on it would make more of those proteins right and so now this is beyond tissue permeability this is if you can stack right like oxygen or light energy anything that's giving the cell more energy it will produce more of the good stuff that the pmf is stimulating right so for sure there's so many ways that they stack well together synergistically Awesome. Have you ever actually heard of the biocharger? Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Yeah. I just interviewed the guy, the creator of that. Okay. And, uh, I mean, some of the stuff I didn't even know, but he's, he's creating a, when the, the machine is on it and it hits the frequencies, it actually plays music at CD quality. So when you sit around it. And uh, I also found out that he worked with Nikola Tesla's mentor and wow. didn't actually created this thing. So, um, yeah, it was, it's uh, something I've been playing around with, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, are you familiar with the Wim Hof method? Have you ever tested that out? Yeah, so I, I personally don't, I mean, obviously in our circles, a ton of people have gone through the training and the certification. And so, yeah, I don't, I mean, I understand the premise. Um, and remember, I mean, years ago, he was on uh, a show where they basically attach all kinds of sensors to him they submerged him submerged him in ice water and looked at his physiology and all that stuff so um while i understand physiologically what's happening how he's controlling the nervous system i i, I have never gone through the courses or the certification so yeah so it, i mean i guess you don't have to have actually done it yeah but i guess my question with that is because in my experimentation sometimes i'm like is the Wim Hof method more powerful than the hyperbaric oxygen chamber? Um, because the feeling that I feel sometimes is like, wow, I get more out of it. So I don't know if you have any insight on that based on your information, like what can possibly uh, be happening in that scenario that would, would maybe enhance it. And which, by the way, I've tested out doing the Wim Hof method in the hyperbaric oxygen chamber okay. and then directly after as well. I, I did all these crazy tests, but do you have any thoughts or insight on that? Yeah, I mean, I, better is um, a little too subjective for me to answer, right? Yeah. So because, you know, obviously from a accessibility perspective, infinitely better. You can do it anytime that you want, right? And then from um, a, uh, we'll call it general health perspective, I, I would say it's better because you can do it anytime. Mm. Right? At some point, you could have the most amazing thing, but if you can only do it so often, or if it's cost prohibitive to do it for the rest of your life, then yeah. really the cheaper thing, even if it's only 80% as good as that thing, is technically better, right? Because you can do that all the time yeah. so from that perspective. And then, you know, for specific conditions, right? Like, I don't know, I'm too much of a scientist. I kind of need to know like all the data. Like, I'm this old, I have this condition, this is what's happening in my blood, then maybe right. better or not. But globally, I would say Wim Hof is better just, just from a purely accessibility perspective. You can do it anytime that you want, right? Like you don't have to travel and go there. I mean, we know so many people that they're like, well, like this is the best thing for you, but they don't adopt that thing. Then the best thing for you means nothing because they're, they're not doing it. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a, I'm glad you brought that up for two reasons because um, I got into it because it's like the lowest hanging fruit. Yeah. And, um, part of healing hacks is going to be uh, the two combos. Like, okay, if I'm good and I want the highest, like all the bells and whistles, 
yeah. here's this option, which I, you know, put in hyperbaric oxygen chamber. Yeah. If you don't have the money, you don't have the time, you don't have the energy, Wim Hof method. Yeah. So you kind of answered that, that question and it was perfect the way you phrased it. Um, so, and, and I asked that question with obviously, there's no way at this time to really even <laughs> scientifically know yeah. what's happening, what's going on. Um, yeah. It is possible to measure, no one has done yet. For sure you could hook up all kinds of sensors, EEGs, HRV, you know, all kinds of stuff and measure. But yeah, I, I, as far as I know, there's no, um, and I'm sure eventually they probably will do a study comparing the two, you know, but currently doesn't exist. Yeah, I, I think they, they will. They're doing, they're doing more and more studies on WIM. I know that for sure. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, so it, it, yeah, in that, being that there's the lowest hanging fruit mm -hmm. and then there's kind of like the bells and whistle. Do you have any, any suggestions on besides what you already said, which I, I think the lowest hanging fruit would be what you already recommended, right? So like increasing your sleep, uh, checking your gut and maybe, maybe suggestions on tests that people can get done. I know you're big on like analyzing the tests and seeing what's going on inside the body. So, Maybe that's a good place to start. Yeah, so it's, I mean, there are there are so many tests that you could run. Um, I mean, it's the question like um, maybe like uh, what would be some of the first tests? Because I mean, we, we do all kinds of testing. Um, yeah, so th that's perfect. Yeah, what what if someone has an issue, a health issue? What are some of the first tests that they should look at? Yeah, so spectra cell. Sure. So spectra cells a test that will look at a uh, six month average of all the vitamins and minerals and antioxidants in your body. Right. So it's almost like um, if every hormone and chemical in your body is like a recipe, you know, you have like chicken soup, lasagna, you know, pub sandwich. Right. So this test will look at how much lettuce, carrots, tomatoes and stuff that you have. Right. And so pretty important. And so, um, most people don't realize if you go to your doctor and you get your physical and let's say they look at your vitamin D levels or look at whatever they want to measure vitamins, um, that is just what's floating in the liquid of your blood the moment they drew your blood, mm. right? So the analogy I give to people is like, you know, imagine if you wanted to find out like someone's finances, the traditional test will look at how much money is in your pocket. You might want to look at like six months of bank statements to get a better <laughs> idea. <laughs> That's like, good. I like that. This is just like how much do you have in your pocket right now? And yeah. so, yeah, so the spectra cell would be amazing because a lot of issues actually just come from nutrient deficiencies. Mm. Although someone, you know, low testosterone, well, maybe because you lack the minerals that are needed to convert certain things into testosterone. Mm. Right? So traditional medicine will measure the end result, which is <clears throat> low testosterone, and of course they'll put you on testosterone for the rest of your life. We can already look at, well, what were the things that needed to make that recipe? Are you deficient in any of those um, ingredients? And then we can look at, Okay, replenish those ingredients. Yeah. And also, so many people take vitamins and minerals. They don't know if it's doing anything because they may not need those things, right? They're not measuring. They don't, there's no pre data. Most people take it because they read somewhere that it's helpful. Right. So that test is a great test to start with. And then after that, I would definitely say um, ALCAT, so, which is food sensitivity, right? So, which foods makes you inflamed? Just those two alone would be um, tremendously helpful. We yeah. can almost skip. Really, does a test to see if your gut is leaky and inflamed? We can skip it because we can pretty much assume that almost everyone's gut is inflamed and leaky. Yeah. We've, everyone we've tested so far for amount of Roundup in their body, we yeah. haven't had anyone not have a good amount of Roundup in the body, which then wrecks your gut, basically. Wow, is that serious? Yeah, we, we, we've never seen any results that didn't have a good amount in the body itself. That is mind blowing. It doesn't matter if they eat organic or not organic. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Wow. Holy cow. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty crazy. Um, now, I know heavy metals is a big thing. I was going to get into toxins, which uh, glyphosate is just, wow. um, I guess, destroying everybody, <laughs> um, whether they like it or not. Yeah. And um, so, for example, uh, you hear a lot of people say, you know, you're an analysis for certain heavy metals. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, someone might get a urine analysis and see, oh, you have no mercury in your urine, but that's actually a bad thing. 
or it could be a bad thing, right? For example, if you're not processing out the mercury. So do you have, um, you know, if someone wants to get a heavy metal test, do you have um, suggestions for how they do that? Yeah, so the, the it's like toxins test in a way. So, um, yeah, so the heavy metals, most of that stuff is um, inside your cell, right? And so when you pee, um, uh, and, and, and collect the pee and test it, and whatever metals that they find is not really a true indicator of what's really in your body. Right. So ideally, you want to take something that chelates. It's almost like you want to take something that squeezes your cell to get the metals out of your cell into your body to make it into the pee and then measure how much that is. Mm. Right. So, and most people don't realize this. So if you just like take a test where you just pee, it's not a true indicator. You actually have to like pee, take a chelator, P again, and that's going to give you the true data of how much heavy metals in your body. Right. Yeah. And so maybe it's, it's a hair a, sample maybe in combination with that or something. Yeah. I, I, hair samples are a screening tool. Okay. Um, it can't definitively tell you exactly what's happening inside your body. There's no hair test that's that accurate, but yeah. it's a good screening tool. You can kind of guess. Um, for example, if the hair shows some heavy metals, we would then, of course, then do that test that's a lot more definitive. Gotcha. Yeah. In general, um, I was, you know, if you ever go to a practitioner that only uses hair to discern what's happening, that just tells me that that practitioner um, probably could benefit from more education on, on how to find yeah, the, the deeper data. Gotcha. So, yeah. Your hair that, was kind of, that was kind of my point of bringing up the question is that you hear a lot of people getting these tests but it's not necessarily, it's like a witch hunt. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You never know. Yeah, whereas if you, but you know, this is the, the drawback right now is, so the benefit is we can test for over 4,000 things in your body right now, no guess, right? We can figure everything out, like every imbalance we can discover. There's never, we're not in a time in history with, with science where we're like, we don't know what's happening to you. We know everything. Yeah. Um, the drawback is to run, if we were to collect all 4,000 samples, that probably would cost, I don't know, $15,000 at least, just right. paying the labs, right? Forget the analysis of the 4,000 data points. <laughs> and so I know when we test entrepreneurs, we're testing about 2,000, maybe 2,500 in that range, and that already costs us just paying the labs almost 4,000 plus dollars, right? That price is out of the range of the average masses, right? Yeah. So, it's one of the reasons why we're building the AI. So I believe eventually we won't need to do the testing because the AI will figure out correlations and bypass the expensive testing. That's the goal. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, we're already starting to see elements of this. We just tested a bunch of people in a, a certain area in the US and everyone had high amounts of a gasoline additive, like off the charts high amounts, right? Really? Not just off the, yeah. And so we know based on that data, if you live in that area, yeah, we, we don't need to test you. We can pretty much assume you have this uh, gasoline additive in your body. Are you able to tell what area it is? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, Baltimore, D.C. area. Wow, okay. Good to know because I actually, um, my yeah, my wife's family is from there. Yeah, so everyone we tested, like, it's by percentile ranking. Everyone was above 95%, like, highest amounts in the U.S. Basically. Is that because it's in the water? I mean, uh, I figured out the so, source. Yeah, a little bit digger deeping. It's in the pipes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Crazy. So, um, so I guess on that note, you talked a little bit about chelators. For those that don't know, that's something that helps bind the toxins and process yeah. it out. So, um, what are your recommendations? I know there's a ton of chelators, and I know that if people use the wrong chelators, you can actually do some serious damage. Yeah. You, so, yeah. Uh, maybe a little bit on that, like what a process of how to do that or what would be best way to go about doing that? Chelation is um, very tricky. It's like an art. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, this is where I don't recommend, like, let me just self-chelate. Yeah. Like, you die. And so, uh, yeah, this is the one you're, like, detoxing all this stuff. Like, you know, we like, go follow this program, do it yourself, no problems. When it comes to heavy metals and chelation, like you, you need um, you need someone very experienced in proper um, heavy metal detoxification process, mm. or else it can be very dangerous. Yeah, and so right. this is the one time actually to talk about drugs. So um, 
the best chelators are prescription meds. Mm. It's the one time you, you're going to want to use a prescription medication to pull it out. And it's a short, it's a, it's a great example of like, you don't take it forever, right? You take it for a very short duration for a very specific purpose, and then you retest for sure. Really? So like what meds? Yeah, there's there's a bunch of, um, um, I'm just thinking, uh, um, I'd rather not, just from liability perspective, because I don't want people to try to get this stuff and do it themselves. It like, literally, like, I can't stress the importance enough, like, you need someone to carefully manage this process. Well, just in speaking with you, I, I mean, I probably could refer, I don't even know, five or six people off the top of my head to, to you. Is this something that you do uh, from uh, remotely? Is this something you can just send them the test, they do the yeah. test, and then you send them the results and go over everything? Yeah, everything that we do um, can be done remotely. Uh, so I was just in Baltimore this past week. I was in San Diego two weeks ago. The data collection process, we prefer um, people to be on site, right? And so mainly because we're collecting so much data, um, you know, a year before this, we used to send the kits to, you know, for sure you can go and take the, um, the blood and the stool and the poop and the saliva and all those samples yourself. But what we found was that especially with the uh, population that we work with right now, which is entrepreneurs, um, they're busy, right? And so literally like three months later, we'd be like, hey, we haven't seen the results. And they'd be like, hey, because I'm staring at it on my kitchen table. Yeah, and so now we're like, yeah. <laughs> right? And so because if you think about it, un unless you're, you know, we're, we're so practiced at putting out fires, yeah. when it comes to optimizing your health, there's no direct fire. It's not like I have cancer. Like people have cancer, they'll, they'll get those tests done like tomorrow. Yeah. Because there's no big fire, um, it, it tends to be, you know, put off. And so now we basically recommend people at least doing the data collection. They need to come on site. We collect all the data. And just, you know, we can collect some very interesting data these days. We can collect obviously physiological data, right? Everything chemically about you. You know, those machines that we can measure the energetic vibrational meridian imbalances. That's all okay. available. Yeah, huge. Uh, obviously, we can assess mechanical data. Yeah. Uh, we've been taking, of course, psychological data, um, and all that starts to paint a very clear picture about the human. And we can almost predict, you know, what's going to happen in the future with that data. So, wow! Because of the gene expressions, everything. Yeah, gene expressions, the stories that you have. Yeah. The energy imbalances, the chemical imbalances. Of course, the gene. Man, I'm gonna come see you. <laughs> yeah, it's um, very fascinating. You're from Jersey, right? Yeah, but we're, you know we're, we're that's our we're doing these healing houses. So, you know we'll be in Ojai um, actually Monday, and we'll probably be in Miami, Austin, and Toronto are the next ones. That's you know people basically like please come to my town. Yeah. And so right now that's the that's what we're doing. So we're making house calls basically, right? So we we show up, we bring all of our equipment and technologies, and we turn an Airbnb into like a super high end clinic, and then we test and measure everything. Yeah. No way. I, yeah, I, I mean, I, the last few times I saw you, I was like, all right, I got to go do that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to jump on that at some point here, maybe Miami or something like that. Yeah. Uh, cool. Is there anything that you see just in, in the general population that people can do right now um, just to enhance their, their health? Like one quick fix. Sure. Yeah, some of the easiest ones are like blue light blocking glasses at night, mm. right? Like, I don't know, $15 on Amazon, game changer for most people, right? Because blue light, screen time, you know, it wrecks your, even though you're, you might be like, but I sleep well. Well, when we have the, um, our clients wear the aura ring, which tracks your sleep quality, we yeah. find that deep sleep is adversely affected from all the blue light screen time, right? So blue light blocking glasses, that's super easy. Uh, and that's, I'm a huge fan of like, it's a set it and forget it. You look like stick it on your head and, and you're good, right? Yeah. So that's one. Um, some other, uh, yeah, um, I'm a huge fan of like wiggle your fingers 100 times a few times a day. Oh, really? You can count like one, two, three, <laughs> four. I like but that. It does, yeah, because we are, our brains are like, choo, 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 all the time. Like later, tomorrow, I got to go grocery shopping. I got to do this. This is a mindfulness practice, basically. Mm -hmm. Right, super simple. Because I find that for most people saying, hey, meditate, to say to someone that is brains all over the place, never meditated, to meditate, it's like, just go slam dunk. 
right? Yeah. And because they're judging, they're like, I can't shut off my mind. It's constantly racing. They're all that stuff. And so yeah. I, I usually start, off, you know, recommend with like just a mindfulness practice of wiggling your finger a hundred times. And after, and just, you know, set a goal for like one time a day for the first week. If you get two in, that's like bonus. And so after a few um, months of that, then you can go into like guided meditation, right? Because with enough mindfulness practice, at least now you can not have your mind wander so much with someone talking to you for 15 minutes. Yeah. You do that for a few months. And then after that, then you can do traditional meditation and kind of ease your way. That is life-saving for most people, just that practice. Wow. And so it's, and it's free, like the app, the, all that. I mean, well, the, the app might cost a dollar, right? And so yeah. other than that, it's, it's pretty free. Uh, so that's another one. Um, uh, I mean, those, just those two alone is. The Aura Ring is pretty cool too. I mean, like my yeah. sister has one and I've been meaning to get one. But yeah. we went to Peru and, um, you know, all natural light, plus no Wi-Fi, none of that. Yeah. You know, you got the natural frequencies. And the first night she had the, the slept there, she's like, I had the best sleep that I've ever had on this aura ring, I think. And I, yeah. she's had it for quite some time. Yeah. And that's just a, a, you know, just an indicator of what you're saying. It's like the lighting and, and uh, the sleep patterns are super important, super powerful. Yeah, and that directly affects one of those five holes. It's one of the five that causes, is one of the root causes of so many different illnesses. So. Yeah, and that's you know just super simple stuff that you can do. Um, now, uh, I got a quick question on that. So I went down to Peru and we did ayahuasca and uh, for healing purposes. Now, um, one of the big things that they're studying now are psychedelics for trauma, addiction, etc. And another thing that's come out um, a lot in the last couple of years are shrooms like psilocybin but also just in general mushrooms yeah. uh, is this something that you're familiar with and the, the modality of healing sure yeah so um from a research perspective from it's very interesting that you're asking me this just because i mean I've, i don't care these days right so i for sure have done um all kinds of different plant medicines for a long time since i was young and uh literally i was just in vegas and it's Funny how the universe works. So someone was like, "Hey, can I crash in a room?" I was like, "Sure, you can crash on the couch." And he brought his friend. His friend Jack is actually the world's foremost expert in studying brain activity in response to psychedelics. No way. Yeah, like the you world. With that guy. World expert, right? Yeah. So fascinating conversations. Yeah. And yeah, I mean the, the research on it's incredible. I mean there's research showing it really connects brain cells. It can actually now newer ones are showing it can potentially grow new brain cells. Yeah. Um, there's research showing like two doses of psilocybin can basically like get rid of depression, get rid of heroin addiction over and over again. There's tons and tons of research on how um, these plant medicines, which is obviously in other countries completely legal, yeah. they can tell you it, um, but just in this country, it is illegal. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I'm personally a huge fan of using it with a sacred intention of healing. Obviously, not just for like, hey, I want to have fun and party, right? And so, yeah. The intention, I, I is, is the intention behind it, um, and I think for healing, since we're talking about healing, um, intention is probably one of the most powerful things when it comes to healing, right? Yeah. 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 Because you're literally, <clears throat> um, so right. So in Western world, we would we would break it down to the psilocybin from the mushrooms, right? And so in um, in ayahuasca, in San Pedro, and some of the other ones, or peyote, it's like the mescaline and plus other stuff. So we see it from a, a frame of reality of identifying the chemical, but in other cultures, it's literally alive. It's like a spirit that you're working with. Yeah, which I told you. It's not just some innate like chemical equation that you're taking. It's literally the spirit, which has its own intentions and intelligence, yeah. and you're busy dancing with this spirit inside you. So for sure, you want to go into a very um, high reverence and intention in um, yeah. all that. Clear intention, yeah. Um, and we're we're running out of time here because I know I know uh, you're a busy guy. And um, the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about was you talk about stories, mm -hmm. right? And the story that people are telling themselves. For example, I had a lady in here, and she's like. Uh, my blood pressure's high. Can you check my blood pressure? And um, she said, uh, "Yeah, I'm just fighting 
this shoulder and neck issue. And I was like, well, how about you stop fighting it? She was like, uh, and she just like hit her. And so I went through that process with her. So if you can just explain the power of the story and what the story is doing for people. Sure. Yeah, our, our stories um, govern our reality, right? And so, um, you know, the, 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 let me see. Yeah. So the, the science of, of our reality is this, right? So, right, the paper. So, right yeah. now, um, our brain can only process about 3% of reality. Yeah. Right. And so, and so the analogy I usually give is like reality would be like looking through this piece of paper just right. through the hole. And so, it's like, where's the hole? And that dictates what you see. Our stories basically dictate that hole. And, right. and maybe through um, lots and lots of meditation, you can make that hole bigger. That's a whole different topic. Mm. So right now we're talk about you're just changing what you see through that hole. It's, it's basically the lens of reality. And for sure, the story that we tell ourselves um, subconsciously dictates our lives, right? And so many times people, um, there's a mismatch between their conscious wants and desires versus their subconscious wants and desires. Mm. And in analyzing your stories, and of course, through a process of meditation, you start to bring awareness to, you know, what do you consciously want versus what you subconsciously want. And so a great example of what you just said, which is very common, um, I fight, right? So people's language patterns. So if the, if the, um, if the story dictates where the hole is, the language that we use taints or, or tints that hole, like it's yellow, it's blue. Yeah. So our language pattern then at a lower level of then stories starts to influence, gives flavor or changes the color of what we see. And so for that person, as she says, fights, if you were to ask that person, and I've done this before, which is like, who are you if there's nothing to fight, right? And so because they identify their, themselves as a fighter, because to them, maybe when they were young, they kept overcoming challenges because there were a lot of challenges. And so they adopted a story that says, look, I'm a fighter, and that brings me significance and self-worth. Or maybe when they overcame stuff, maybe all it took was a few of these, which is something from one of their parents saying, wow, I love how you fought through that. Right now they're like, oh, my parents love me because I'm a fighter. Who knows what that story is? And so what ends up happening is as they become adults, um, they don't want to fight anymore, right? Consciously, they want life to be easy. Yeah. But subconsciously, they're like, no, no, my identity, my love come from my parents and other people, and my significance comes from fighting. And so they will create situations where they will always constantly be fighting because that's what the subconscious wants. Right. So, yeah, so that's just a, a concrete example of how stories uh, for sure governs um, our lives in every which way. Yeah, it's, it's powerful stuff when people really delve into like, what are their stories and what are their beliefs? Because um, it's like, like you said, the whole is like a view, a point of view. Mm -hmm. And um, that can turn on gene expressions as well. Yep. Right? So Bruce Lipton, yep. um, you know, talked about epigenetics and how your beliefs change your biology. Yep. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Is there anything that you'd like to add in terms of like healing hacks or things that you see that would be helpful for somebody? Yeah. And a little bit touches upon what we just talked about, which is, you know, in the self-help world, <clears throat> um, because language is so powerful in the self-help world, they call it limiting beliefs. What are your limiting beliefs? And what's interesting is then you, then you say to yourself, like, why am I self-limiting myself? Right. Yeah. That's weird. So I, I tend to look at it as outdated beliefs, right? Because when you were young yeah. and maybe one of your parents said, wow, you're such a fighter and you go, I'm a fighter. Therefore, my mom loves me. That was a great belief in that moment, right? It's just outdated. 30 years later, it's just an outdated belief. And so yeah. even the subtle change from um, limiting to outdated is actually in itself very powerful, right? And so um, just being very choosy to um, select the words that self nurtures and self loves because the mass market, when they're trying to sell you this stuff, they're basically saying like you're broken and some of that language will be imparted that you are broken, but I'm like, no, maybe you're not. And so just, yeah, my high level would be choose the stories. And of course the language 
that is more of a self-love, self-nurturing language versus self-fixing, right, um, language, right? And so because, again, if I were to try to, I mean, most people would try to sell you a book, whatever will say, you need fixing, right? And so in other words, subconsciously, that coin, like everything has two sides. If I have the fix, it means you are broken, right? That's the, the side to that. Just like good, bad, positive, negative, right, wrong, right? everything has its polarity. And so just being careful of, do you even want to pick up that coin? Be careful which coin you pick up. That's huge, right? And so don't play into the game. Everyone picks up the coin. Be positive. This is all over Facebook. Be positive. You just subconsciously told you you're negative, right? Because if you're already positive, you wouldn't be like, be positive. Right. right? And so because you picked up the positive negative coin, my, my suggestion for most people is be careful which coin you pick up with your language and thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. So conscious, conscious language. Yeah, conscious language and, and know that um, always just ask yourself whatever word you use, what's the opposite of that word? Because that comes along with that word. Mm. Right? Yeah. Just be aware of the, right? so in the self, I would have called the shadow side. Yeah. Right? Everything has it, its opposites. Right? Yeah. That's how the universe works at a certain level. So, high level would be that. Um, yeah, tactical stuff we kind of talked about for hacks, like the blue light blocking glasses, the mindfulness practice. Um, simple things like, hug hug a human right like you know forgot to mention that like hug a human go to your right instead of your left if you notice usually when you hug people you go to your left yeah it's hard hard to heart. Heart is, yeah right is heart to heart hug to your right hold for 20 seconds and get some oxytocin it actually the healing causes fat loss amazing and yeah. it's widely available unless you live in a cave by yourself um and those would be some simple simple tactical things Awesome. Well, this has been amazing. This is probably um, the best interview just in terms of like practical information and real just solid advice. And so um, again, I want to thank you uh, tremendously. And I think my current client list will really appreciate this. Yeah, great. You got such a long history in the game. And, uh, and then I know the people that you've worked with have gotten powerful results. And I'm, I'm going to I'm going to come do these tests. I, I need to. So, uh, um, cool. Well, uh, I really appreciate it. I'm going to be sending this to you as soon as I upload it. So, um, let me, um, stop. Before